and welcome back to another episode. This one is going to be a bit of a longer chat through, so if you want, make a tea or a coffee, make a snack, and then come hang out. Today, I'm going to be blocking one of my new sweaters. So this video, I'm going to talk about some of the ways that you can block your garments. Even if they're not wool, you can still block them and what that sort of means and how it can improve your garment, that sort of thing. So what I'm using to block my stuff today, I'm going to obviously have my sweater, which is this cutie. It's a scrap sweater. It's like a extra wide cropped sweater with, they look like they're three quarter length sleeves, but because it's so wide, they're actually full length sleeves. It's a little bit bizarre looking, but it's super cute. So I'm blocking that. You'll need your item to block. I'm going to be using Eucalan. It says it's a no rinse, um, what does it say? Lanolin enriched concentrate with eucalyptus oil. It's just like a, a wool wash basically. Um, so you can use really gentle, uh, like gentle dish soap or something else that I use sometimes when I'm out of this, I'll just use a little bit of like gentle hair conditioner. Um, because I'm not rinsing it out, I just want to like soften up the stitches and get them wet. So you could use hair conditioner. Honestly, this isn't that expensive wherever you can get it. Uh, I'll see if you can get it on Amazon. And if, it, if you can, I'll link it down below. I got it through Briggs and Little. That's where I order a lot of my yarn. So I just added it onto an order. <sighs> I'm melting. I'm not going to lie. I had to put the camera way up high so that you could see all this stuff. And there's a light on in here. And I've been running around. I had to get on a chair to get it. Don't worry about it. Okay, you're also going to need a towel. <laughs> You'll probably need a couple of towels, let's be honest. You're also going to need something to weigh the garment down. So we're going to be getting it wet and then spreading it out on a surface. I like to use knit blockers. I know I got these on Amazon a long time ago. And I got these as part of a Christmas gift. Uh, these are T-pins. Knit blockers or T-pins are really good options for pinning down the garment. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. Um, you might think to yourself, oh, can I just use thumbtacks or push pins? Possibly. If you're making something that's like a lace weight crochet or like a, like a doily or something like that, you could probably get away using push pins. Um, but for something like what I'm making, a sweater, the push pin won't make it all the way through and you need it to get all the way through the sweater into the surface underneath. So push pins don't really work. But if you don't have any pins, you could also use sewing pins, like the ones with the little head on the back. Um, if you don't have any pins at all though, and you still wanna block your item, you can use something heavy. So if you're a hoarder of plants, then you can just use some of your plant pots. They just need to weigh down the garment to keep it lined up how you want the shape to go. So you could use plant pots. You could also use cans. So that was what I used to do before I got anything proper done, like before I got these mats or the knit blockers or the pins or anything, I would use cans. Also, you'll need something that can hold water. So for the purpose of this video, I took this drawer out of one of my plastic three drawer containers and I'm using one of the drawers so that you can see me do it. Normally I would just use the kitchen sink or the bathtub uh, because I don't, this was kind of inconvenient to carry, it's wobbly. Um, so I'm gonna just get started and kind of talk through what I'm doing as I block out my sweater. So first, oh, last thing you're gonna need. This is not really an instructional video, obviously. Um, something, if you're doing the pin method, something that you can pin into. So before I had these mats, what I would do is I would layer a bunch of towels and then I would put like a piece of cotton on top, like a bed sheet sort of thing, so that it's like a, like a bit of a cushion and I would pin into that or I would weigh that like we'll put the cans on top of that. But now I have these things and you can get these at like Canadian Tire, Walmart, probably Amazon, um, but they are like floor mats. I mean, you could buy blocking mats, but like they charge way more. They're like four times the price and they're only one fourth of the size. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So I actually had these given to me by um, a friend when I was at the Canadian National Exhibition with one of my businesses. Um, they had these new floors for their booth and they found that they were too slippery so they removed them after like a day or two of using them um and i just washed them up and now they work as my knit blocking mats crochet blocking i don't really knit um but yeah so if you're looking for a good way to 
find these, I would say you could use obviously like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Kijiji depending on where you live. Um, but also yard sales because these are often used as baby floors like in baby rooms or garage floors or they're that sort of foamy surface. So you'll need something to pin it into. Again, if you don't have something to pin and you're using the weight method, just layer up some towels. So to get myself started, I've got this full of water and um, I don't know how much water, a sink full. Uh, and I'm gonna take my wool wash and usually I use the cap because I'm like putting it under running water, but since I don't wanna get, I'm gonna get my hands dirty anyway. Um, you just put a little in there, like, I don't know, like a tablespoon? This is also wool wash, like to wash your um, wool garment once you've like, I don't know, gotten it dirty. Usually wool is like sweaters for me, so they don't get dirty. And the water is just like barely warm. It says tepid water on the instructions. Uh, this isn't gonna get super bubbly. If you use conditioner, you might get a little bit more opaque. If you use like Dawn dish soap, you might end up a little more bubbly. Um, but this also helps reduce the smell on wool. If you've got wool that really smells sheepy, I personally love that smell, but if you don't like it, getting the Yucalan wool wash, they have a bunch of flavors, like they have lavender and eucalyptus. I think they had tea tree, pretty much essential oil flavors, they've got them. Um, and that really like gets rid of the uh, sheepy smell in wool. Okay, once the Yucalan's all mixed in, which it is now, I'm gonna add my garment. Again, I said the water's just barely warm. Nothing else is special about the water though. I didn't use like filtered water or anything. Um, but next, add your thing. And you just have to soak it. You don't need to like be aggressive. It just needs to sit in here. And I'm gonna leave it actually for half an hour. I don't know if that's 100% necessary. Let's see what the ukulele actually says. Oh, it says soak for 30 minutes. There you go. So I'm gonna leave this in here for 30 minutes. And in 30 minutes, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. Oh, it looks even prettier wet. The colors got like darker. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. Um, so yeah, I will be back in 30 minutes. I mean, for you, it'll just be like the next scene, but for me, it'll be in 30 minutes. And um, look at my plants. I have these plants, which is nice. You can look at them. I also have a plant behind me. I don't know if you can see it. It's a philodendron hope my newest plant. These ones are just ones that the morning sunlight comes from that way, so giving them a little extra sun this morning. Okay, enough. I will see you in 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, friends, so for this part, you might not be able to see me well. Actually, I've got an idea. It's been half an hour, by the way. Let's start there. It's been half an hour. Let me move you out of the way. If I come back here, I'm just trying to keep the sweater in the shot because that's what we're working on. Um, I'm just going to move my pins over. I made myself a tea, did a little bit of crochet work, and now we're back to do the blocking. So first, we're going to need to get the sweater out of this water. If it was in your bathtub or something, I would just say <laughs> drain the tub. Uh, but mine isn't. The water's cool now to the touch. And... Um, I'm just gonna squeeze it a little bit in case that, oh my goodness, the smell of sheep just jumps out of the wool <laughs> when you start moving it around. That's one thing I really like about this wool. This is Briggs & Little, it's a Canadian company, and um, <laughs> their wool is like rustic. Like it smells like a sheep, even the dyed wool. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it out. This is not the best for it because now it's already stretching, but I need to get some of the water out. Today I am filming, well this, but I'm also filming two other sweaters. One that is taking longer than I expected and one that is almost done. So that's my plan for today. This thing has got to weigh like 15 pounds, not even an exaggeration, it weighs more than thunder, but like a lot. Okay, so after you squeeze it out, don't wring it out, you don't want to wring it out at all. Um, what you do next, because if you wring it out, it'll stretch it. Um, you can see also the water is no longer clear, I don't know if you can see, but the water is kind of like yellowish, I want to say. Okay, so now that's gone. Uh, take your towel, this is the next step, spread her out. And then 
take the sweater, which is still wet. Like, honestly, I would have, if it was me, like, not doing it for on camera, I would have just left it in the tub for, like, another half hour with the drain out or in the sink with the drain out so that it's just sort of leaching out all the water that's left. But the show must go on. So what I'm going to do is lie it out on a towel. Usually, like I said, it would be a lot more dry by this point. Um, but then I roll it in the towel. And that's just going to remove like more moisture. Um, and it's going to just dry it out a little faster. Because when you pin a sweater that's heavy like this to a uh, blocking mat, it can take a while to dry. Like honestly, I put these in a room that has a dehumidifier in it. We have one uh, downstairs that just has a dehumidifier running all the time. I put this in that room to try and have it dry faster when I'm blocking things. It also keeps them like out of the way because it's like a basement room, you know? Okay, so now it's going to be time to pin. So if it's still soaked, go back in with another towel and do it again. But what I'm going to do now is get my mats. Okay, so next you get your garment, which hopefully doesn't weigh 45 pounds. So this sweater is short, but it's wide. So I need three mats because of the sleeves. And you want to not be... Uh, stingy with it. You want to be able to stretch it out as much as it wants to stretch out. So this is <laughs> not like this because it's not quite enough room on this mat for the sweater. But now I'm going to show you what I do for blocking. So when I'm blocking something, I always try to line up the bottom two pieces of the body. I'll get the, the side seam at the bottom of the body and I'll get my knit blockers. And there's two sizes. They come in like big wide ones and then little ones. These things are sharp like you wouldn't believe, like more than a pin is sharp. So be very careful with these. Okay. And then I take that first pin. Actually, yeah, I can bring it right down to the edge. And I go through the seam in the same spot on both sides of the fabric. So uh, I'm going against the first stitch on one side and against the first stitch on the other side and then I push it through the mat. And then what I'll do is I'll just keep, with the large knit blockers, I'll just keep pinning up these the first side. And I, I'm not pulling anything extra hard and we're still have, we're gonna have lots of room to like negotiate this out. Um, but I'll just keep putting pins in until we make it to the armpit. And usually at the armpit, I'll use a smaller one just because it ends up changing directions. Next, what I do is I go to the other side. And you can see how long these pins are. Well, I don't know if you can. They're just about an inch long, um, which makes them perfect to get through big fat sweaters, which is pretty much exclusively what I make. And then I'll just start wiggling it and sort of mushing it around and stretching it out at the bottom so that both layers are the same like right on top of each other you don't want like the back to be like oh you can't see jesus you don't want the back to be significantly higher than the front or like you wouldn't want to pull this up to here and block it because it'll stick that way you want it to have the collar that you made in it so you would pin that down like that we're going to pin it down flat i know Lori in the live stream you were asking about what to do about a collar i'm going to do the collar in this one um, but first, I'm going to try and find a way to do these plants. These pretty plants that I put in here so that you can see my plants. Okay, now you should be able to see a little better. So I'm going to line up the two bottom pieces. And I'm just going to start, like I said, pulling them so that they match up perfectly all the way across. Oops. And I do that sort of a flicky thing just to make sure they're both lined up just like that and then I start putting pins in and what I like to do is I don't like to pin the actual bottom band I like to just pin above the um the cuff like where you have your what is this called like your rib stitch on your sweater like the bottom hemline and the wrists I don't like to pin them because I want them to shrink up a little bit so instead I pin just above on the actual sweater design and I'll just do that with a few 
few because these this doesn't tend to shrink up this wool or this way that I crochet um, but you can just start stabbing pins everywhere because it's pretty much time for that now and make sure the shoulders are straight and then next I'm going to do the shoulders because I want to create that square and make sure it's like a really strong square so I'm just going to start in the middle of both shoulders I'm almost out of my knit blockers now, so I'm going to be switching over to the T-pins. I should have got a couple of packs of these. I don't know why they only sell them. They don't sell them with enough to do a sweater. You'd think they should sell it with the quantity you need to block, like, a sweater, because nobody's blocking teeny tiny things, right? Okay, so with the sleeves, same thing. What I honestly, another really good thing you can do is measure them to make sure that you end up blocking them the same length. So I'm going to pin this one how I like it, and then I'm going to measure it and do the same thing to the other side. And since I made my sweater square, like the actual body doesn't have any shaping, I know to follow that line with the sleeve, which well done Laura on that one, making it easy for me. Past Laura. Present Laura appreciates it. Okay, and then same thing that you did with the bottom hem, do that with the sleeve so that it's nice and flat. You want the top piece to be in line with the bottom. And then same with the, that you did with the bottom side, uh, pin above the cuff into the actual work. And then it's not so important to block the underside of your sleeves, but I just block it all because I have the pins for it. And sometimes my cat will come and disturb my stuff. Um, and when he does that, these pins keep everything in place when he like, decides he wants to see if he can rip it off of my blocking mat. My cat has an attitude problem. Okay, there we go. Let me grab my, whoop, my measuring tape. So the entire length of the sleeve, 16 inches. The length of the sleeve without the wristband, 14 inches. Make sure that both sides are even so that when you have your finished sweater, you're not left um, with one sleeve hanging off and one sleeve. Um, being too short. Again, I'm lining it up with the shoulder on the one end, just stabbing it through, not being too particular because this is all done in single crochet, I think. So it's all like very straight lines. Then I'll do the armpit and the underside. The other thing this does, what I that I really appreciate about blocking, it flattens your seams down. So I don't know if you notice, when you do crochet, sometimes you get really bulky seams and it's fine, like it doesn't ruin the garment or anything. It's just when you have super flat seams, it makes it feel really uh, like high quality. So now I'm gonna do the collar. This is where you should pay attention, Lori. <laughs> um, so this collar, if I weren't to do anything with it, um, it probably would start to curl out just because it has reductions, but not as many reductions as you anticipate for a collar like this, so it might try to curl out. So what I do is stab right through the garment. And again, if you're not using um, pins, I would, I would just put cans all the way along the neckline like that, just all the way around, um, and that will keep it flat the same way. I would recommend books, except for we're working with wet wool, and uh, you don't wanna get your book sweat so and for this one I'm putting the pins at the top of the collar because that's the part I'm worried about uh, curling I'm not worried about this bottom area I'm worried about that top lip just sort of starting to warp so I'm just gonna stab like an inch apart honestly I'm stabbing pretty close together for that collar uh, because I really don't want any puckering or any movement even later I just want it to be done once and then we're done and then on the back neckline I'll do the same thing I'm, it's not as some, it's not something I'm worried about as much um, but I'll just put some pins in to keep it straight less about stretching more about just keeping it nice and straight there and I'll just put one more in Again, because I have like a cat that disturbs my life, if I have any pins left over when I'm doing a project like this, I will just start to stab them in other places. So I'll do the seam 
of the arm to the body piece, just again, because I have the pins. And because CJ may or may not try to pull this off someday. And by someday, I mean today. So again, this is where I'm gonna leave you until tomorrow when I can show you what it's looking like. But you can see at this point, it's just flat. It's just a flat note, totally. And that is pretty much the whole goal of blocking is flattening your garment and making sure your stitches line up. Like if you were doing a doily, you want it to be like a perfect circle, right? You don't want it to be a wonky circle. So for me, it'll be tomorrow. For you, it'll be the next clip. See you then. So I'm not gonna lie. It's been like a couple of days. And by like a couple, I mean, it was last week when I blocked this, but it took a while to dry out. To finish this off, I'm gonna pull out the pins and show you what this sweater ends up looking like because we blocked it. So just pull out all your pins once it's dry and wait till it's fully dry. Honestly, it makes all the difference. If you pull it out when it's like a little bit damp, it's gonna move a little more after you finish. Like once you folded it up and put it away, it's going to be not all the way dry. So it's still gonna do some shrinking uh, and it'll be disappointing if your sweater isn't the shape that you want it to be. So, like I said, it's been several days, but it was worth it because now I'm at a point where the sweater is fully dry and I've got a minute here to pull it out. There is a little bit of, um, of a dent where the knit blockers were pressed in, but that will, that will sort of fluff itself out. And that's okay because it's better that the seams are super flat. Oh, that looks good. I love a new sweater. I'm not gonna lie, I'm working on three different sweaters right now. I have the Fancy Nancy Cardigan, the Whisper of Dawn Stripes Pullover, um, and the Uncle Dean Pullover 2.0. So if you're looking for sweater patterns, I should let you know, uh, there are quite a few sweater patterns coming to this channel um, throughout February because I'm working on so many sweaters right now. Uh, this video is not that, this is blocking. <laughs> but if you're watching this and feeling inspired to make a sweater, I've got three sweaters I'm working on and one pattern to add to that. So there's going to be four sweaters coming out in February, which is very exciting. Also, I don't know if I said this in this video yet, don't forget to like the video, hit the thumbs up button. It's just down in one of the corners, either down here or down here somewhere. And it really helps the channel out. The channel is growing. We've just hit 28,000 subscribers, which is nuts. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed. But for those of you who didn't, subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. Helpful for the channel. It's free for you. It just takes a second. And it's a great way to show your support for a channel. Not just my channel, any channel. If you have channels that you like watching, like the videos. It means a lot to the creators, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm almost done with these pins. Sorry that I'm facing my back to you, but I'm almost done. And then I'll be able to show you what this sweater looks like. There we go. So you can see, just as I peel it up, it's so flat, it's so nice and it's like ready. You can see the seams are pressed perfect and the sleeves same thing the seams are nice and flat so when you wear it it's not going to um, I don't know how to explain it but when you don't have the seams uh, pressed flat like this something weird happens it doesn't look 100% right when you put it on whereas this is gonna look perfect oh, I know I'm wearing a sweater on right now but I'm gonna put it on anyway. oh. oh I love this I love how this one came out. <laughs> All right, so here's the top. I don't know if I'm fully in focus, but because it's been blocked, it hangs properly for the shape. So this one is supposed to be a super boxy sweater with like this sort of ripple in the front where it curves over my body. I didn't want it to look to hang like a box. I wanted it to hang like that, like a little drapey. And this one's supposed to be like super casual, like cozy home sweater. So I think it turned out really good. I do want to try it on without anything underneath. 
think it's cute. I think it actually came out cozy, cute, and I don't know if you can really tell, but it's flat. The seams have been made perfectly flat. And I just really like doing this when it's for a project. You can see even up here, the sleeves have that crease in them. That'll sort of wear out, but at the same time, I think it adds a little bit of, I don't know, finished perfection. So block your stuff. Even if you're doing acrylic or cotton or wool, block it, try. Do it with the, um, the cans or the pins or whatever. I'm probably not even focused at this point, but I'm gonna go. That's all for today. I hope this gave you some something beneficial and uh, I really appreciate you being here. So I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.